Y'all ready? Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Verse 3, and when I think that God, His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art. got it in the wrong key. I apologize. <clears throat> Hadn't even started yet and the cheap seats are coming in loud and clear back there. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you. Thank you. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Looking forward to our Bible study in Colossians chapter 1. Just a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn over there and mark it because I forgot to earlier. Colossians chapter 1, I think we're going to start in verse 13 in a few moments. Well, I don't know of any great announcements that you need to be reminded of, except Sunday school's at 10 and morning worship is at 11. Our evening Bible study is at 5 o'clock. And uh, we're in Second John. 
we probably won't be there a few weeks and uh, then we'll go ahead and do third John and get the Johns out of the way. Uh, somebody said, well, you're going to go ahead and do Revelation? Nope, not again. I don't think I'd live long enough to finish it. probably be my luck. But anyway, good to see all of you. Glad to have those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live. And uh, I know some of you are not able to be out after dark. Some of you can't make it, but we appreciate you, you, uh, you joining our Bible study tonight. I hope that uh, you indulge us when we take the time that we need to uh, look over our prayer list together. It's a very important part. Back when I was young, we called Wednesday night prayer meeting time. And so we try to take as much time as we need to go over our prayer list together. Uh, if you didn't get a copy of the printed prayer list, I think Sue has some. And uh, she'll be glad to get it to you. So let's start. We'll go over the list starting on the upper left side, the first column. Pray for the Masters Builders. They're getting started uh, with their journeys this year. Uh, Becky was looking at their schedule. They're going to be in Cassville, Missouri in April, Becky? Yes. Did you say? Maybe some of us can go see them then. But uh, Pray for the Masters Builders. I'm thankful our church supports them and their ministry. And I pray God will raise up some younger people to join them and help them. And we love them to death, but they're not spring chickens anymore. In fact, I look around the room tonight, not many of us are spring chickens anymore. But anyway, it's good to see Vicki out and about. Vicki, you bet Vicki's recuperating well from hip replacement surgery. She said it didn't hurt nearly as bad as it did before they did it. So I guess that's a positive thing. Uh, pray for Laura and Richie. She's got some autoimmune problems. They don't know exactly what it is. Sometimes that's very difficult to diagnose. And Becky has given them some information of some people that specialize in that. Hopefully they'll be able to, uh, to uh, find out what she needs. Keep praying for Miss Joyce. Uh, she's recuperating from knee replacement surgery. Pray for our missionaries that we support. I talked to Brother Norcellus. I forget when it was. Was it last Wednesday night or was it Sunday, Becky? Um, and we can't. Be one of those can remember. I noticed on Facebook, Kendra and the Risners, uh, that's who the pastor of the church is or the missionary of the church that she works with, they were going out of the country to another place and I think for a Bible conference. But anyway, remember them and Christian Martinez and his family. Keep praying for Jerry Ruland. Uh, that's Miss Shirley Spears' sister. Lynette, it was good to see Lynette at church Sunday. She's got a long recovery from a shoulder replacement. Uh, Miss Eula, any new updates on Miss Eula, Janet? She's not doing very well. She's okay. got fluid on her I'm sorry. All right, keep praying for her. Pray for Harrison Arnold. If somebody who's not highlighted on the list we need to mention, uh, tell me. I don't want to miss them. Donna Fielding, continue to pray for her. Keep praying for Sandy as uh, she goes for some, from some therapy after her, her stroke. Wayne Schulte, I think you can take Brother Jerry Roberts off right now, Sue. Yeah. Keep praying for Kenley Lamberson, uh, Merle Christian. Pray for my aunt and cousin, Shirley and Billy Wilson. They always comment. They appreciate your prayers. I pray for Brother Charlie Washington and Brother Harrison. Uh, when you get older and life changes, it's difficult. And uh, just, just lift them up in your prayers. Alyssa is doing well. I think you can take her off. She's driving. She's on her own. And, Trini left her in Batesville and came back home. Uh, Trish Slaughter is still waiting for the results from her therapy, her chemotherapy. Today, Charlie Real was supposed to go to the doctor, but I didn't hear from him, but they're going to schedule his surgery, so keep praying for Charlie. Janet Pettigrew Elliott, she came home from the hospital from her, from her rehab, and we were messaging today, and she told me, Please keep praying for her. She's going to have knee surgery pretty soon. 
so we'll leave her on the prayer list. Uh, we were asked to add Kenny and Debbie Butler. I haven't heard any updates from them. Uh, the family of Peggy Fields, uh, the family of Jane Maloney, uh, Sharon Craft. We were asked to add her Sunday. She's got a collapsed lung, and we were asked to pray for Robbie Reed Sunday. Uh, Anita Draper. We were asked to add Anita to the prayer list, and uh, uh, Jenny McGee. Can I say that right, Sue? That was my writing. I wanted to make sure. <laughs> I can read your writing. And then we were also asked to pray for Sarah Lee. Is there anyone else that we need to mention tonight or update or someone you see that we can take off of the prayer list? Anyone? Well, somebody mentioned Sunday. I've got two. Corey Mormon, so I need to highlight you. Yeah, thank you. He needs thank to be highlighted. Yes, and, and I, I forgot to mention him. I didn't highlight him when you mentioned that. So thank you, Sue. Anyone else? Who was it? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Anyone else? Becky, did you happen to look to see if there were any? There's not any that have been mentioned on our Facebook page or Facebook live page. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So will you stay up there or you go no, back and forth? Okay. So you will walk back and forth. Is that what you're telling me? Well, that shouldn't be a problem for you. Just put a skillet in your hand and you'll go after it. It's not a problem for her at all. Yeah. Usually when they say it's not going to hurt. Kind of like they say, it won't hurt, did it? <laughs> so what exactly you haven't done, Sharon? It's the vein of the and in both legs. Oh, you don't have to swear at me. That's not all the time. Pretty nice, but not on my finger. <laughs> no, I'll be okay. Yeah. We're set to go to nap time. Yeah. That's right. It's just not your, your personality or nature to not be here. No, no. No, got to do. I got a long <laughs> All right. Charlie preaching at Plainview this Sunday? All right. Heard from Brother Charles Hughes. He'd be preaching at Plainview this Sunday. He came to me a couple of weeks ago and he said, Man, I'm not getting to preach any. I don't know. I said, There's just not much going on right now, Charles. People are going on vacations and yeah, being gone. Yeah, he had another church call on this Sunday, too. So. Well, good. So, see, the Lord takes care of him. I'm glad the Lord's using him. You bet. Anyone else? All right, well, let's pray over these, and we're going to open our Bibles to Colossians chapter 1, verse number 13 is where we're going to begin. If you didn't get a copy of the outline, Becky has them. You don't? Yeah, I'll put them under your Bible. All right. Jay, would you lead our prayer for us, please? What's the title on your page say? 
Ten credentials of the preeminent Christ? Yes. All right. I don't have that on mine, on my notes. That's your outline. Uh, this is this is the favorite, my favorite part of the book of Colossians. And probably one of the most profound statements uh, in these verses about Jesus and who he is. It proclaims his deity. And if you'll recall, the people at Colossae were being bombarded by false teachers and they didn't know what to believe. So, especially about Jesus. And so Paul writes this astonishing section. The whole book of Colossians is great. But this section in particular talks about who Christ is. You know, I was thinking about it. When the Apostle Paul, well, before he was the Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, the first time he encountered Jesus is when he met him on the road to Damascus. And he was struck blind. And you remember what he said? He, he said, who are you, Lord? Who are you? So he, he acknowledged deity. I mean, he, he knew he had to be talking to some kind of a God who had the power to do that. And you can go back and reread that story in Acts chapter 9, I believe. But when we come to Colossians, we find out that, that Paul had come to a much fuller understanding of exactly who Jesus was, and might I add, who still is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The preeminent Christ. Preeminent. That has to do with his godness. That, that singles him out above every other one. So we're going to see... How Paul identifies him as the all-sufficient, preeminent Savior, all right? There are ten things that he says. We probably won't get through them all tonight. But Colossians chapter 1, we'll go back to verse 13. We, we, we used it in the last section and then through verse number 20. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And by the way, those thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers, some of that's referred to spirit beings. We, we uh, both good and evil, all right? Uh, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Isn't that good? I mean, it's good. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace, once again he talks about his blood, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Isn't that good verses? I love that. I love that text, all right? First of all, these verses bear out that he is the king over his kingdom. I want to go back and read verse 13 again. And I like the way he identifies Jesus, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, capital S-O-N. Listen, Jesus himself claimed to be a king. He claimed to have a kingdom and even came into this world to proclaim the truth that he was a king. I won't go back and read all the verses I'm going to mention, but you might write them down as a reference in your notes. In John chapter 18, he bore that out. 
And after his resurrection, after, after he rose from the dead, he claimed the extent of his rule over all heaven and all earth. And you can read that in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 through 23. Well, I'll tell you what. We're close. Let's just read it. I know Ephesians is right there close to Galatians. There we go. Ephesians 1. Uh, verse 23, 23. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of of him that filleth all in all. He's a king. He has a kingdom. And he earned that right to have that kingdom. And, and that's claimed all throughout the book of Revelation. If, if, if you start in chapter 1 and go all the way to the end of the book of Revelation. He is recognized and proclaimed as a king everywhere we go. So he is preeminent above all. You know, as I look around at what's going on in our world today, and we see, uh, we see what's going on in the Middle East, we see what's going on in Ukraine, but especially what's going on in the Middle East, and I think I mentioned it Sunday night or sometime, but now Iran almost has completed uh, nuclear power, and they're just crazy enough to use it, and if that offends somebody, well, I can get over it, but you know it's the truth. But all eyes are focused on the Middle East. And of all those countries, their eyes are all focused on Israel. You probably saw this if you're a looker at Facebook. But somebody posted a map on Facebook. And it showed all of the Palestinian countries that surround Israel. And how many square miles they covered. And, and, I mean, it covered up the whole page, and Israel was just a speck on the map. Someone I read recently said, Israel is considered the navel of the world. It's right in the very center. I didn't know that. But it's where it's happening. But it's where it's going to happen, too. All right? Uh, I was talking to a gentleman just this week at a funeral, and uh, we started talking about the rapture, and he said, are you a pre-tribber or a mid-tribber? I said, well, I'm kind of prepared to preach it either way, but I lean toward being a pre-tribulation rapture. And, and I do believe the Lord one day, the shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then we who are alive and man will caught up together with them clouds to meet the Lord in there, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. But if you read the book of Daniel, there's a lot of evidence that it could take place at the midpoint of the tribulation. But if you'll recall... From our study of end time events and what you know about it already. The first three and a half years of the tribulation when Antichrist is ruling on this earth. It's going to be perfect peace in this world. And the world hadn't known perfect peace in I don't know how many centuries. You know, we fought World War I. It was supposed to be the war to end all worlds. It wasn't long until World War II started. World War II ended in what, 45? When we... Bomb Japan. Korea started in, what, 50? So, you know, we've been at war with someone all over the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think if we were here during, during that three and a half years, we would be able to identify and know what was going on. But that's just, that's just a country boy thinking. So... Yeah, well, uh, there's an old gospel song we used to sing. I can't remember the name of it now, but it talks about after the Lord comes back that the churches will be full. But I'm afraid they're going to be full of church members. Well, it'd be frightening to know how many people who come and sit every Sunday in this church and a lot of churches who've never been saved. I was listening to Brother Gerald Mitchell one of his old tapes, and he'd listen to uh, J. Harold Smith preach. 
and he preached till midnight at a church. Preached till midnight, and a hundred people got saved that night. All one hundred of them were church members. All a hundred of them were church members. That's a little frightening. I heard a preacher say one time, "You come to church on Sunday morning and sit down, and look to your left, and then look to your right, and more than likely, one of those two people you looked at are not really saved." Well, people say, "Well." Why would you say that? Jesus said it. He said it in Matthew chapter number 7. He said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in your name, cast out devils, did works in your name. But he said, I didn't know you. Because they're counting on something other than the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to get them there. All right, let's go on. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, last Sunday we preached on why the blood was necessary. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Leviticus, Leviticus uh, uh, we, 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 we talked about that. Almost all things under the law are purged with blood. And the New Testament said without that there is no remission of sins. That word remission and redemption, uh, redemption means to buy back. To pay the ransom price, all right? Let's say you were kidnapped and, and or you were sold into slavery. And, and that's, that's the picture we see uh, in the Old Testament. And, and somebody, wants, somebody wants to redeem you, to buy you back. They have to have the price. Well, the redemption price for our salvation was the blood of Jesus Christ. And by, by virtue of that blood... We have forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness means to be released. Same word as redemption. Re released from the bondage or imprisonment. You know, the liberals who are becoming so much more prevalent in so-called Christianity today, they've taken away the blood. Uh, some of those old sermons that we've been listening to from Brother Gerald Mitchell, they were preached in the 80s and 90s. That's been a long time ago, y'all. And back then he told about visiting with some friends of his who were of, uh, of another denomination, and they'd taken all the songs about the blood out of their hymn books. You know? Uh, too gory. Well, don't want to hear about that. Well... If you can't hear it, then you can't be saved. How shall they call on him and whom they've not heard? Uh, I don't want to be repetitive and redundant with what I said Sunday. You can't go to heaven without going through the blood. You can't go around it. You have to go through it. And... Oh yeah, we, we we see pictures that have been created and painted of Jesus hanging on the cross. Not a good depiction of what he looked like. In fact, he was the shell of a man by the time they hung him on the cross. Uh, probably beaten beyond recognition. And uh, and yet, the Bible says he said, "I lay my life down in myself." No man taketh it from me. I lay it down so that I might take it up again. So he willingly shed his blood. But you know, here we are a few months removed from Christmas, but every time I'm reminded when they announced to Mary, you shall call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. That's what he came for. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. All right? So, I miss, I miss having old-fashioned testimony services. And one of these Sundays, I'm going to surprise y'all. And we're just going to have testimony service. And uh, the Holy Spirit's here. Somebody will get saved. Well, let's look at verse 15. We've still got time. It's only 7 o'clock. My watch is working, and it better because it's brand new. Becky gave it to me for Valentine's Day. 
It's what I asked for, by the way. Who is the image of the invisible God, God, the firstborn of every creature? Two profound statements in that verse. You remember they said, show us the Father. What did Jesus say? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You know, He said, I and my Father are one. Uh, when he said, before Abraham was, I am, and they took up stones to stone him. They got it. He identified himself to them as God. But he didn't come through Judaism, so they, they didn't want to accept that. They were probably hoping that it would be one of them or one of their children or somebody in their family. But he is the image of the... Let me say it again. The image of the invisible God. Uh... That word image means exactly what it says. A figure, the likeness of. Jesus, the image of the God who's invisible. I've never seen him. I've seen him spiritually. I've never heard him. But I've heard him spiritually. I've never touched him and felt him. But I've touched him and felt him spiritually. But one of these days... Our faith will become sight. We will see him. But we weren't privileged to walk here on this earth. And I wonder how we would have been compared to those people. No man has seen God. But Jesus declared that he was made manifest in John chapter 1. Uh, and as Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, Let me ask this. This is a good question for a conversation and nobody may answer. And if they don't, it was a bad question. If they do, it was a good question. When you pray, do you try to visualize like you're before God? You can't visualize. But yet she can paint. I don't know how you can paint if you can't visualize. Anybody else? When I'm praying privately, I like to think that I've walked directly into his throne room. And I, you know, by whom we have access, by his grace. I've never thought of it that way. I've always, I know he hears me. Yes. Uh, but I've never, I've never thought of it. About just being right there. I had a good relationship with my dad. Well, there was some pretty rocky years there for a while when I was running from God and trying to get away from him, and I'm not proud of that. But uh, I could talk to my dad about anything. And, uh, you know, as I grew older, I found out how wise he really was. And, uh, I, have, I have great memories. But I would like to thank my Heavenly Father is that and far beyond that. And we could go sit down before him. We're going to bow down before him. I know that. But we can just, we can talk to him. I know Jesus is at his right hand and he and Jesus are one. I get that. And I can't explain it, but the Bible says they're three and one. But uh, I, th I, think, I think that's a good plus. plus. He is the image of, of the invisible God. I'm glad that God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, John said, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That omnipresent thing is hard to understand. Yeah. In this flesh. Oh, yeah. But is that difficult to feel? We're talking about being able just to sit down 
in God's lap and him hung us and us talked to him. For those of you who can't hear everything that's being said in the auditorium. But uh, I think it's not hard to forget that because we also said to each other, we didn't have that relationship with our own dad. So seeing that is real to us because we know that's how he cares about us. It's not hard. Well, maybe that's something we all need to work on. You know, sit down, be alone, maybe read some verses from Colossians or Ephesians in your Bible and put yourself in a spiritual frame of mind and just sit down with God one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I'm not much of a King James prayer. I don't. The these and the thous, and I'm not knocking people who do that by any means, but he just wants us to talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him what's on our mind, what's on our heart, yeah. our hurts, our fears. Uh, he wants you to say hi to him. Yep. Anybody else have a comment? <clears throat> well, thank you all again who joined us tonight. <clears throat> Facebook Live, good to see you all here, here in person. Next week, same bat time, same bat channel. If you don't know what that means, you're young. Wait a minute. Excuse me. Good, good report from uh, Debbie Butler. She will have surgery, but the cancer is contained. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Anybody else? Once again, y'all, we appreciate you watching. I'm going to turn it off right now. Come see us Sunday.